All right, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to the Disguised Horse channel. Welcome, We're starting welcome. something new here. We're starting a podcast, and you won't believe who our new co-host is. It's our new friend, our best friend, Adam Honkler. Welcome to the show. It's me. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I am very excited to be here, though. This is going to be awesome. I think this was the best decision I've ever had. And uh, to let everybody know, so Adam here said something amazing to me at one point in time that... I just thought it was kind of a joke. I was like, dude, you're going to be on the podcast with me. And I was like, all right, we're going to split it 50-50. And then he's like, no, 50% goes to the channel, 25 and 25. And I was like, this is a match made in heaven. Yeah. I mean, we knew right off the bat, <laughs> as soon as we met each other, that this was going to be a thing. Uh, as soon as we saw each other, we're like, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be one of the greatest things that ever happened to us. And I, uh, I think so far it has. I walked in day one and I just knew, like, <laughs> kindred spirits, that's my best friend right there. <laughs> that's, fuck, damn it. <laughs> Guess I'm hanging out with him now. I mean, I had limited options, but you were like, <laughs> like cream of the crop, though. Cream of the crop. I mean, it was either you or that guy. And uh, that guy. <laughs> Let's not talk about that guy. We won't talk about that guy. Uh, don't just, just, just don't. Hopefully he doesn't listen to the podcast. Because uh, he might know who I'm talking about. I doubt it. Because that guy could be anybody. That could be anybody. I mean, we're both we're both old. <laughs> if he asks me, I'm definitely going to be like, no, that's definitely not you. But now I've said it on the podcast. <laughs> but it's, it's 100%. It's, it's already you. recorded. <laughs> if you think it's you, it's you. No. But, oh man, it's, uh, I mean, we've been friends now for a handful of months, maybe three months, but truly, I, I love you, bud. I mean, it feels like forever. It does. It does. In a good way, though. In a, good, a very good way. A very good way. But uh, I mean, everybody kind of knows who I am. All uh, all of our seventy five subscribers we have right now. So you know, really top of the charts with this one. But I'm I'm one of them now. Seventy six. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everybody kind of knows me. Uh, although they don't know my full name, Matthew Villajama. Write that down. Write it down. Write that down. You're gonna have a hard time spelling it. Don't worry about how to spell. <laughs> as far as you know, one of the disguised horse members. We have all these fancy videos of me being really shitty at video games. You should see my Super Mario Brothers playthrough, like on the NES. It's horrible. I couldn't even make this <laughs> jump. <laughs> I'm definitely like I'm going to go through like your entire video library this weekend. I would not recommend, especially <laughs> those early ones where I was uh, so nervous. I started out, uh, 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 like, like, like. No, my first video, I r was had this grand idea. I was like. The new Pokemon games, because if you guys don't know anything by this point, I love Pokemon. I am a 33-year-old man, and I will say that Bulbasaur is one of my favorite things on the planet. Either way, the new Pokemon game came out. Sun and Moon? No. I can't even remember the names, but literally, I did the video, and then I was talking about the other game. It was Sword and Shield. and I <laughs> The first thing I said was... uh Welcome to Sword and Shield, or Welcome to Sword, and we were playing Shield, so just like the video just has like Shield <laughs> growing in. <laughs> it was, dude, it was, it was cringe. It's still cringe, but gotta but this, start is gonna, this is going to be better. It, it has gonna, to be. Is, I mean, it, it has to be. It can only go up. It, I mean, from zero subscribers to one, that's, a, that's an increase of that's, that's, 100%, that's right? That's 100% better. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's it's been a trip uh, growing up in the, the mean streets of Fort Lauderdale and my, my privileged lifestyle, skateboarding. And I think it's why we hit it off so well, because like I started talking about skateboarding and you were just like, Baker Skateboards is the shit. Rad. <laughs> Extra rad. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know how to kickflip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were definitely skating in the parking lot. Yes. The other day. Yeah. Because I got the illest board. I'm sorry. I, I love that setup. I actually just ordered another one. There's this dude, uh, Jerry Gurney. He was skating for Blood Wizard. He was on Thrasher King of the Road. And I was like, this guy's my spirit animal. He came <laughs> out. He, this dude's got to be like 40. in uh, tight, tight black pants and just like kiss makeup. That's like smeared because he's so sweaty. That is your spirit and he's animal. just like kills bowls, like without question. Just absolute ripper. And uh, I think he was kind of like the reason why I thought like the old school kind of fish shaped boards were sick. And I he uh, I follow him on Instagram, and I was like, dude, <laughs> I could I could go for a new board because I got the fish board that I got because of him, and now he's 
has his own fish board set up and I ordered it and it should hopefully be here today and I make it there before my wife gets home. So she, uh, she's like, <laughs> question, what's this new skateboard doing, you 33 year old fat white dude? <laughs> like, let's not talk about that little guy. Fish boards are definitely red. Did you, do you have any, you need to put your skate stuff on the channel. On the channel? Yeah, like that video you showed me the other day with you shredding that bowl. Oh, man. put it on the channel. That's the first time I ever dropped into a bowl. That was legit. I mean, oh, I don't know what it is about the coping on like a real like pool, um, but it just like it's it like sticks out a little bit. So it just kind of it just in my head, like it doesn't make it's going to be like going over a cur- like a little bump. So like dropping in is, you know, it's whatever. But I don't know. I just had to get over that fear. So I think it was what well, let me backtrack uh back up in omaha where we were before here now that we're in oklahoma city you know rep this 100 degree weather oh my god finally got rain though for finally. like the first time in two months yeah and it was not enough <laughs> it's already done raining it's already done raining and now it's just humid yeah but so i went to go drop in and the bowl in omaha was bigger than the bowl here at the gathering place in oklahoma so I think it was like about two feet um, smaller. So you could kind of drop in and then ride the transition throughout the rest of the pool. But when I dropped in in the pool in Omaha, I took my foot off for some reason and just kind of slapped like four feet down, you know, and uh, a little TMI. But I like to skate in like really low profile shoes, like the van slip-ons. I don't know. I just had this dream. Old, old to, school red. Dude, just... <laughs> Three kickflips are gone, you know? Yeah. Actually, 360 flips because uh, your boy can't kickflip for nothing. Got that tray? <laughs> Got that tray flip. They just call me Trey Matt. Trey Matt. I did 20 360 flips in a row. I don't think I've done 20 360 flips, period. Oh, no. That was my best trick, man. I got that big spin, though. Whoa, fakey? Nolly? Fake, switch? Fakey. fakey big spin? Solid. I like the front side. I don't know why. Just spinning it backwards. Always tight. Favorite combo. We had this curb at the skate park where I grew up in southern New Mexico. And it was like a three-foot curb. And then it dropped off after that a couple feet. So I would come in fakey, big spin to a manual on that curb, and then either kickflip or backside off of it. It was like the only time I ever felt pro. That's fucking pro moves, dude. That's some flip-in, flip-out shit. <laughs> yeah, it was legit. I love, uh, I love sketchy spots as well. Like, just... I don't know why, but like this was perfect. But the run up is trash. The setup is <laughs> the, the obstacle itself is trash. But like sometimes it's just really good. Like, did you ever build a box at a friend's house or at your house and just skate it for days and days and days? And then it gets sit out in the rain. Oh, yeah, it just falls apart. It just fucking falls oh, apart. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you just plywood and two by fours with some metal that you found somewhere. Yeah. Your dad comes home with just like the weirdest shaped plywood and you're just like, I guess I'll make it work. <laughs> My dad would be like, you, you went into my shed and used my tools? <laughs> Those are mine. Those are my tools. <laughs> no, but so uh, I used to love nose manuals and we had this obstacle and it was just out front of my bud's house. Um, for, at first, it was, um, it, was a, it was a nice box. It was like six feet long, just like two and a half feet wide, like about a foot and a half tall. Like it was a solid box, right? And uh, I don't know why, but have you ever done like a nose bonk on something? Yes. So, like, you just kind of like roll over like a bump in the street, and just yeah, kind of like on, on a curb. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd uh, I'd go up, I would just just ollie on a nose manual, and then kinda, it was like almost had like a bank to it, so you could kind of like uh, just, <laughs> uh, just eat, uh, off the other end, <laughs> and it kind of like suck up to your feet. And but I do like a uh, nolly. Oh god, nose manual like front side shove out, okay. and it just it felt so good. Just so good. And I just, I love that, dude. Like, it was just like the, the crummiest thing, but at the same time, it was like the best thing ever. Those trashy spots that you make, like, I'm going to, there's no run up to this, so I'm definitely going to lay down this plywood. <laughs> like, those are the best ones. The best. Oh, man. Or like, have you ever skated like a gap? And basically the the landing, you didn't have a broom, so you just landed in the piles of dirt that came out because you kicked out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh man, I have so many fucking random stories. I I have a I have proof. So if you ever meet uh the boys, the the P Town crew, they'll they'll attest we've skated some sketchy spots, <laughs> the sketchiest. 
and I was also the biggest baby. I'd kick out like a hundred times, and then I'd do one, and my toe would touch. I'd be like, count it, counted, count it, <laughs> nailed it, <laughs> nailed it like the cake show. Nah, man, that's enough about me. Tell me about you. About me. So, Adam Honkala. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Day one, actually, Esquire. Day one, actually, when we first met, and I was asking you about your name, you said your family was from Finland. Mine At some is, point in time. Mine is also from Finland, which I was like, dude, it's, it's meant to be. <laughs> it it's just meant, meant to, to be. be. I also have a hard to spell name, just like you. <laughs> we, our ancestors were eating fish in Finland. At some yeah, point. for sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Fermented fish. Yeah. And my dad still does. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, military brat. My dad uh, was in the Air Force. So we moved around a lot. I was born in southern New Mexico. We went overseas for a couple of his tours, Portugal, uh, Aviano in Italy. He retired out in California, so we hung out there for a little while. Bakersfield, Fairfield, and then Ooh, uh, back did you to... skate any good spots? No, I didn't really skate as well. I mean, I rolled around a little bit, but I was a kid, so I, d- I didn't really get super into it until we went back to southern New Mexico, and then, yeah, that's when I started kick flipping five stairs and, and doing my, my big spin manuals. Did your high school have, like, a perfect set. Oh, I definitely got uh, kicked out of high school for for a perfect set. <laughs> so, so we had uh, yeah, we had this like our high school had like really good concrete. You know what I mean? So you always had like the smooth, smooth run up, and then we had this perfect eight stair, and it was just you think you could do anything down it. Like it was. It was just really long. So if you could get over the longness, but there were also like other good spots. Like we had these benches and they're just concrete benches like attached to a wall. So they weren't going anywhere and they were just beat to shit. So you could like get in a crooked grind or a 50-50 grind, just the whole thing. And then they would paint them all the time for some reason. So they were always buttery. <laughs> but no, this guy was telling me uh, about this. He he was running from security, kick flips a set, and just keeps going. <laughs> that that did happen. Yeah, we had a big stair set in like the common area where everybody would eat lunch in the high school. And I had brought my board to school. And yeah, I was going and like skating in the hallways one day. And my buddy's like, man, you know, it would be awesome if you could if you kick flip that stair set and I was like, that would be rad. So I went, I went and I did it. And when I landed, I highly suggest you do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, high school kids. So you're like, you yeah, dude, that's, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I did it and I saw security coming. So I took off and my buddies are just like watching me like laughing. So I run, I actually make it out of the building. I was like, dude, I'm home free. And then the security card just comes trucking around the corner, and just drills me. I hit the ground oh, like my buddies man. are like trying to record it and it was terrible. But yeah, so I wasn't allowed to bring my board to school anymore. <laughs> Ever again. No, because they just knew we were going to skip class and go skate. I mean, oh, yeah. literally when we did bring our boards, um, we would literally go skate the eight during school and people would just like fucking form around us. It was so weird. Or we'd just get off the bus and it'd be like Saturday afternoon and be like, well, South 8's right there. And we'd be like, send, let's go. And I would just kick out a whole bunch of times once i ollied it once like i could do it numerous times but dude all i did was ever kick out i was such a big old biggie bitch <laughs> it took me forever to get tricks forever yeah i just got lucky on that one until i got tackled by a security guard you just got lucky as your friends are looking at you in awe and there's sparkles behind you oh, or yeah. you're just like it's not it's the most perfect like one foot non-rocket kickflip ever <laughs> they're just like God! <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome. It sounds fucking awesome, man. Oh, dude. All I remember South Florida just being so flat. And we'd get bust out the tri rail and now I'm having all these like crazy high school flashbacks come up. Like just all the d- dumb shit we would do. Like, I mean, even going back and you're just like, you know, I still follow like on Facebook, like South Plantation High School, and it's just like South Plantation High School security guards got busted for kilos of cocaine, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, no wonder I wasn't safe there. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Home of the Paladins. <laughs> <laughs> Man, any other cool stories you got from growing up? Well, I got plenty of cool Today's stories. Today's about you, my guy. Let's see. What else do I got? What was your favorite thing about Arizona? New Mexico. 
Yeah, the same same shit, same, different day. It's, it's pretty close. We also had another skate crew, SSDD. Same shit, no, different we, day. We were uh, a <laughs> Century skate team. Century. Century skate team. Uh, we actually, talking about building like super sketchy like skate obstacles, we actually built a half pipe in my buddy's front yard. If not, 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 the, not the backyard. No, front yard. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know if that still counts as like, like trailer trash type stuff when you have like cars out in the front yard. But yeah, definitely built a full like five foot half pipe out my buddy's front yard. I think it only turns ghetto once uh, the insurance companies like take that shit you down. You can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want renter's insurance. It, it was not small. <laughs> it was probably like five feet tall, probably like 12 feet wide. It was a big half. Did pipe. it have a um, really sick like vert to it too? It'd be like three feet and then two feet of vert. <laughs> Actually, it was, I, I don't even know if like it came up to a full vert. Ooh. Yeah, it was. I mean, those are the best. I mean, though, it was like high school kids building it. it, man. Like we didn't have a plan. We're just like, this would be awesome. Uh, I'm, all right, let's put this string and make a circle and we'll get four pieces of the half. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty bad. And then like, of course, it's going to sit out in the sun and get terrible. So there was like this hole in the middle that you had to skate around. The best. <laughs> no masonite, just yeah. plywood. <laughs> I remember I was trying to get, uh, it was like, I, I was trying to do an air to like a backside. And I just kept trying it over and over and over again. And like, I finally nailed it. It took me like all day of just back to back trying it. And I almost passed out (laughs) (laughs) just sweating through your jeans. Cause I just like, I would, I would go up and I would try and I'd hit, try and hit the rail. And then I would fall off, grab my board, run up to the other side, drop in again and just keep doing it and doing it. And then I finally nailed it. And I just like laid on the other side and almost passed out. (laughs) I'm just working through some teenage angst here, just back to back. Just, to just back. leave me alone. And like all my buddies are watching me all day. Like they can't skate because I just keep <laughs> going around every time and doing it over and over just again. Snaking them, yeah. snaking them, snake. <laughs> probably not cool, but hey, I finally nailed it. The best thing about skate parks are snakes. You know, those eight year olds with helmets that just like, I got this, and then get killed by bikes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Full the BMX on, guys, the BMX guys at the skate park, always the enemy. Always. Always the enemy. That's actually how I broke my shoulder. Did I tell you about that? No. Well, I'm going to let everybody know now. Uh, so uh, I was 20-ish, I think. No, I had to be right around my 20s, whatever. Fresh 20s, like 1920. Um, met my was with my wife, uh, girlfriend at the time, now wife. Uh, Clark Snack Daddy Padilla was there. Maybe I'll meet him one day. Best name. The best name. Snack Daddy. Snack Daddy. Uh, Snack Daddy, where are you at? Um, either way, so I just cruise this park, cruise this park all the time, all the time. I cruise this park. Um, like I was actually filming for a video with the, for the LRG team. I had met some people. I think, dude, honestly, you know, you've met me. You know, I just, hey, uh, tell me about yourself. So I basically did this to some rando dude I met, and because uh, I was like, why do you have a love park tattoo? Cause like there's the big four block at love park oh, yeah. and uh uh it was just a big skate scene i mean who was it was it billy marks or chris cole backside flipped the shit yeah chris um, cole and like that always stuck with me and i was like that's such a sick trick and it was just huge it was literally like 20 feet long so you had to like get dri- pulled in by a car in in a city park and then do your backside flip right uh, anyway, so I called this dude. I was like, what do you know about Love Park? You don't know shit, right? <laughs> and he was like, scrub. Uh, who, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm just running my mouth because, you know, <laughs> what I do. That's yeah, why that's, yeah. I was like, let's start a podcast. Same shit, different day. Yeah, that's literally how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to talk shit in the microphones? We do it every day anyway. Yeah. Why not just hold the microphone while you're doing it? Yeah. Story of my life, right? Um, anyway, so I called the dude out and uh, we start talking and we, we become friends and we go skating all the time. So, you know, we were skating at this park and then, uh, I was skating it the day before and a day before that I was like, Oh, Hey, uh, he's like, you want to, you want to go skate? And I was like, yeah. He's like, would you got to drive though? And I was like, okay, no, no big deal. I'll drive. He's like, but we're going to go skate with the LRG team. And I was like, what? So anyways, I'm filming for this video. I'm just warming up. Right. And I go to Nolly 50, 50, this bench. Cause, uh, at the time I had really big Nollies. And I just, I put my hands down like Antoine Dixon and I was just riding this Nolly 50 across this bench. No big deal. No big deal. Fucking biker left his peg marks right in the middle of that big shit. Big old gouge in it. Dude, I had, it was, I had the first obstacle of the day. I swear to God, I must've done like a 360 flip and then was like, look at me, wife, you know, <laughs> look how cool I am. Look how cool I am. Showed off for some fucking 12 year olds and then, uh, you know, proceeded to break my shoulder. 
worst experience of my life. <laughs> it sounds painful. Have you ever not been able to wipe your ass? Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's I fucking horrible. Them, yeah. <laughs> it's literally the worst thing ever. Uh, story of my life. That's why I stopped skating. Actually, story of your life. You don't. You can't wipe your own ass. Uh, I wish, dude. It's a. It's a talent. Not many people have. <laughs> But, I mean, what a start. What a start. That's actually why I decided to join the military, too. Yeah? Yeah. Keep that on down low. Can't, can't be pro, so I'm going to just go and join the military. I couldn't get it back afterwards. I just, I was scared. And I get it. it was just rough. Yeah. No, I had a similar one. I had, we had the, we call it the Red Five. It was a bridge over like in Arroyo, right next to the skate park. And uh, I kick flip this thing all the time, going to the skate park or whatever, backside. And one day, just it didn't work out. I caught the kickflip. I <laughs> just, caught, just, that, I just that, that wasn't my day. I caught the kickflip up really high, and uh, I didn't extend on the way down and landed almost in a full crouch. Blew out my kneecap, looped it out, cracked Ooh. my collarbone on the on the sidewalk. Oh my god! And then I yeah, after I I skated back home, like I could barely stand. I was just kind of like trying to roll down hills. And there. And then yeah, uh, recoup from that. Had my arm in a sling for a while. Had a brace on my knee. And then after I was healed up, I tried to get back into it, and it's just the heart wasn't there, man. Yeah, it's 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 rough when you take a a big fall like that. I think that's a life lesson. That's you know a life what I mean. Lesson, you just kind of sure. just kind of get scared, but like these these guys who just keep going. Like uh, I was listening to Sheckler talk, Ryan Sheckler, Ryan Sheckler, yeah. Ryan Red, <laughs> Rye Rye. <laughs> I remember watching him on uh, Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Huck Jam. Dude, I have so many stories that I just want to share with you guys. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Sheckler was like, he was like nine or 10 and he broke his elbow. And then like, just because it had broke before, like it would just consistently break. So he's just always breaking bones. But the thing is like, he could keep back, he could keep going. And I mean, you know, I, I'll do that for anything that doesn't involve me not being able to walk or run or, <laughs> or wipe, wipe your my ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> but Hey, that's a life lesson. You just gotta, you just gotta keep on moving. Dude. I don't know if I went the opposite way. Cause like I. I couldn't, I, my heart wasn't in the skateboarding, but I went to even dumber stuff and started riding motorcycles. I mean, you just got to not, not fall and then you'll keep going, right? I mean, I haven't fallen yet, but. That, I mean, big facts, big facts. Big facts. Oh, so many weird stories. I, like everything is just coming to mind. I just want to talk about all of it. We got, we can do a million episodes. We you, could do a million episodes. So you'll have plenty of time to do stories. Yeah. I, I told that. And when we, uh, when we become famous, I'm going to force him to move to South Florida. So yeah. Or long, not South Florida, Cocoa Beach. My bad. Oh, as long as he gets a farm, I have to have my farm. That's fine. That's fine. I gotta have a place to put my chickens. Yeah, and and my goat eventually. And your goat that your <laughs> wife won't let you have. <laughs> Sorry if you're listening, Miss, <laughs> Mrs. Billajama. But uh, one day we'll have a goat. We got we have a family of dogs, so I mean, whatever. You got little yapper dogs, right? Uh, we have the three little ones and the big one. So I have a poodle. All yappers. I have poodle? a poodle now. Yeah, and you you love it to death, right? Uh, to death, something, <laughs> <laughs> some kind of some kind of thing involving Dude, death. that dog. Like it'll just go like full speed in the backyard for some reason, and then like no brakes, it'll just truck you. All gas, no brakes. All gas, no brakes. It just runs straight into you. Like what are you? Do- what are you even doing? Uh, attacking, full kill, all the time. Kill mode. I'm definitely not gonna give it the stupid poodle haircut though. That's bullshit and i'm upset about that you're upset, very <laughs> upset that you're not gonna give it the little like leg warmer puffs yeah that's the best part about it <laughs> and then they're angry as fuck but you're like but you're so cute you're so <laughs> cute but you are the devil <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I do have a farm and i do have a poodle how many chickens you got right now i got nine right now we got 15 more on the way 15 what do you mean on the way on the way yeah so like we <laughs> so funny story uh where we, were you we went <laughs> this is kind of like the funny story of how i got the poodle too but that's another story uh yeah so we go to tractor supply to get our chickens because that's a thing that normal people do and they didn't have the chickens that we wanted so my wife's like well where can we get chickens we were trying to find a local farm but apparently you can just order these things on the internet you can just order chicken you can just order chickens on the internet okay. so um, you go in and you just pick your breed like apparently www dot w dot order chickens <laughs> But yeah, so we ordered 15 chickens. Uh, they haven't even hatched yet. Uh, they hatch on, on the 8th of August. So then they'll ship them out a couple days after that. But yeah, the ordering chickens online is definitely a thing. Look this it is up. the weirdest thing I've ever heard at dude, this point. Dude, we got 
this one breed of chicken, Brahmas, no joke, they get like three feet tall and like 18 pounds. This it's is going to be like a Thanksgiving turkey, but as a chicken. This is uh, how we get into dinosaurs because... Uh, it looks like a dinosaur. If it didn't have feathers, it would look like... Should I take all... Like, instead of shaving my poodle, should I just shave my chickens? So I just got little the, naked dinosaurs That sounds way too sexual, but sure, go for shave it. Shave my chickens? <laughs> well, you're going to have to de-feather them to eat them, right? You want to help me shave my chickens? Uh... <laughs> we'll talk, talk about that after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, off, that's off the air stuff. Disguised horse. After dark. After dark. <laughs> That's the secret dark web that's podcast. A, that's the dark, dark web <laughs> podcast. NC-17, where we just no holds bars. No holds bars. You shave my chickens. You shave my chickens. You shave my back. Whatever. Same time. <laughs> Same time. It's just going to be really weird holding a camera. No one's going to listen to this now. We just lost everybody. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> we got a million more. We got a million more. We'll get them back. We'll get them back. Hey, some people are going to love this. Some people are going to hate this. Either way, a views of you. Views of view, but love all you guys. Big love plans. everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening, subscribing. This is going to be everywhere. I'm going balls deep worldwide. Into the internet. This is where it starts. This is where it starts. From here, we're going to start a punk band. Oh, we're doing that too, huh? <laughs> Drift team. Drift team. The the Nissan. So the two threes. Um, two three, yeah. The 2-3 drift team. Drifto. Uh, he actually was telling me the other day that uh, in Japanese they don't pronounce they pronounce it differently. They do, and it's a uh, drifto, drifto, not drift. And I was yeah. like, <laughs> I've never time. wanted a Miata to put into a wall, but uh, now I do. Yeah, drift uh, team. What else we want to do? Drift team, beer, beer. Yeah, we're gonna we have didn't a brewery. Do that. We uh, didn't do that this time. What, uh, what the fuck is wrong with us? I know. We're gonna start a brewery, or at least a chill. So, all right, before we go, we got to do a chill spot. Like not so like we can get a brewery eventually, but I want a place where you can come hang out. You can not even buy a beer, but you know what you can do? You can bust out your laptop, you can record a podcast in there. Or you can order a beer and do your homework. Or you could just drink the beer. Or you can get an Uber ride home because we only support safe driving habits. It's like Starbucks but not for hipsters. I mean, I'd be down coffee. for hips. They they dress cool. They do dress cool, and they like, got they usually have sweet beards. I mean, yeah. and I'm kind of jealous that I don't have one. One day, one day, grow your mustache. That's, you can start there. Yeah, that's okay. I can. I'll, I'll give you that one. All right, but either way, it's it's a disguised horse worldwide. Worldwide, worldwide. Uh, you can expect these. We're gonna start out maybe once a week. Once we get this uh this whole shebang going, we'll shoot for twice a week. Maybe some gaming content in between. Fall into a groove. You tell us what you want us to talk about, but it, for the most part, it's gonna be just us kind of shooting the shit and getting to know each other at first, and then we'll uh dive into the conspiracy corner. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories for days. Drift Do you have a favorite builds? conspiracy theory? Favorite conspiracy theory. A lot of them have to do with the military aircrafts, like uh, like the AWACS, <laughs> like lame. the AWACS con- controlling the weather. That that was one of my favorites. That that that's lame. Stop okay, all lame. right. What's yours? Oh my god, have you heard about the Titanic? I mean, I've heard of the Titanic. Okay, so there's so many just revolving the Titanic. First of all, Jack, time traveler. Time traveler. Because okay. basically, the shipping route that was being taken was during the First World War. Some, I think so. Don't quote me on that, but if that thing didn't sink and that route continued, basically we would have been forced to enter World War I sooner than we would have and we would have lost because we didn't have the supplies, manpower, whatever to sustain the war. Second one, this one's my favorite. Uh, it was actually an insurance scam. So uh, while they were testing it or doing something, there was a fire on board the Titanic and there was a sister ship. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But either way, they were basically identical. So what they would have had to do was take everything off the Titanic and put it onto the sister ship because everything has like a, uh, oh my God, like a, a mark, like SS Titanic, whatever. Yeah. Or So they would have had to shift everything before the maiden voyage and then sink it. And it would have cost less to pay out the families of people who died. Um, then they so they basically would have made money by sinking the ship, paying out the life insurance, and then the their insurance policy on the ship itself would have basically covered everything. 
I'd never heard that before. Never trust anyone. Never trust Next anyone. time on the Disguised Taurus and a Conspiracy th- Corner, or it's going to be even better and deeper. Better than that? It's just the tip of the iceberg, bud. That's Is that a Titanic pun? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in, and see you then. See ya. See ya.